Okay, hi everyone. Uh, uh, welcome to my talk. I'm Vlastimil Babka from the Kernel Core team with focus on memory management. And uh, today I'm not going to be talking about uh, memory management in specific, but uh, about uh, my experience with supervising kernel thesis. Uh, which was the uh, idea of Michael Hotsko that it's a topic that would be maybe uh, interesting for you and uh, maybe interesting enough that you would also uh, join the effort as well. Uh, so uh, I start with the motivation why would we want to supervise students uh, with their kernel or Linux related thesis? It, I think the motivation is that uh, it's not easy to like find new people or recruit new engineers because yeah, I think at some point there were many hobbyists in the community then that could be picked by the companies these days. Uh, most of the uh, contributors are already employed somewhere, so there's a limited pool and it's always good to bring new people into this pool. Uh, and uh, yeah, students are uh, possibly a good source of new people to this pool. Many of us were students uh, at some point and uh, some even uh, did kernel related things at the university. So why not focus on these people? And uh, it's also good to get the students interested in the Linux or kernel development and potentially working at SUSE before they graduate uh, because that might be easier than doing that after the graduation where they suddenly have multiple options. And uh, so that's one part that uh, it can be useful for uh, the community, the company, and also for the supervisor, it can be an interesting experience similar to mentoring new employees or doing uh, these outreach like things. And uh, I would also s explain a bit uh, what we are doing in Prague with uh, the local universities. Besides uh, the, the supervising of thesis, so so we actually have the the Prague office is formalized cooperation with the, the Charles University Faculty of Mathematics and Physics, which uh, has a, also strong uh, computer science. Uh, section that uh, unfortunately doesn't uh, won't ever make it to the name for historical reasons. The, the mathematicians and physicians are very proud of the old name. But uh, yeah, there's, uh, it's, it, it's uh, very strong in computer science besides that. And uh, we also have uh, cooperation with Czech Tech Technical University, which does have a, a faculty that has the proper name. So, uh, and uh, I come from the Charles University myself. Uh, so, I know still, uh, for example, my former PhD advisor. So, I cooperated with them so far. So, I, I have no experience with the Czech Technical University, but maybe others do have. 
and we also have a actually a design, designated person in the Christina Spec team, Peter Hodac, who is the who is uh, tasked to to deal with the process side of this and coordinate. So uh, that's a person you can reach to if you would like to participate. And he all is also more familiar with the Czech Technical University side, so that's that's fine. And uh, besides uh, the thesis, these cooperations allow us to participate at uh, like general career day presentations where multiple companies present and try to recruit students. Uh, there are some lectures, uh, again, that multiple companies take turns and present what they are doing, but it should be also technically interesting, not just an advertisement. And we are also at the Charles University participating in uh, really uh, the normal lectures that are teaching like for example advanced operating systems because uh, and and it's not just us it was also people from other companies like red hat and oracle and and it's it makes sense that uh, uh, people are presenting that really are working with the technology uh, every day there was also uh, even a specialized course for crash dump analysis that unfortunately didn't have enough students interested to continue but uh, at some point even such niche topic was possible to be uh, a university lecture uh, so now i focus on uh, how, how the supervising works in a works in a nutshell by the way, you can uh, ask questions at any time, not just at the end, and also add your own experience uh, if, if you have some. Uh, so what we are doing for a few years now is uh, that, yeah, to, to have a supervised thesis, there has to be some topic that the student has to focus on. And, uh, like exp research something, code something, and uh, to help with that, we uh, have a confluence page. Uh, the the links in the slides should be working when you download them, and uh, there we organ there we put like like short blurbs, like what what would be a uh, potential topic for a thesis. Uh, the good source of this is uh, like everyone has some to-do list of things that would be nice to try if there was enough time. But uh, for, for, for some time you couldn't even get to those. So it's nice to think, uh, go through this to-do list and maybe contribute some of the ideas uh, to the page to the confluence page even if you don't uh, immediately are interested in actually supervising the thesis it's somebody else might do it as well but it's good to have some uh, pool of topics that at some point we can give over to the university and they the students can see them and uh, contact us uh, if they are interested in some of the topics and then then when there's a prospective student and a prospective advisor they can discuss and formalize the final assignment uh, and at that point uh, somebody from SUSE like myself can be assigned as a supervisor to the thesis 
yeah, focusing on the technical side of the topic and usually a university professor is assigned as a consultant that to help with the process side which helps for supervisors who are not from that university and don't know the process in detail or if if you are uh, um, don't want to be as committed as to become a formal supervisor it can be the opposite that uh, the industry person is the consultant and then there's more involvement of the professor but it's always uh, like the matter of uh, how, how how you uh, how, how you discuss the things and agree on that uh yeah so of course being local uh, when it comes to supervising thesis in prague is useful especially if you're a former student like many of us in the prague office but i wouldn't say it's necessary because for example last year william brown from australia was supervising a bachelor thesis just fine and even though there's this huge time zone difference and I've seen the, the defense and it was all great but but you are if you want to participate you are of course not limited to like supervising students from Prague yeah I think you might have gone to some local alma mater yourself and maybe know some of the professors and you can contact them and uh, offer this because the professors are usually happy if they can offer industry relevant topics and somebody else uh, helps with the supervising so they are not so overloaded i think i'm aware of giovanni that was supervising some thesis in Italy, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong. So that works as well. It's just that uh, in Prague we have uh, a history uh, of that. Uh, so after you have the student and the topic, you can expect that there would be some meetings where you first explain more to the student what it, what he should be he or she should be focusing on uh, answer questions uh, because yeah we could tell them to read the documentation and all will be fine except the kernel documentation is close to non-existent so all the tribal knowledge has to be somehow passed to the student and then they can uh, start uh, like doing the actual work uh, which is best if it follows the upstream process so that's what i was been doing so from the beginning we were uh, doing it in form of patches that i could be first uh, uh, reviewing privately so so all the beginners mistakes are solved bef before the first on list posting and so on i will uh, talk about this a bit later and uh, yeah later when the work is being uh, forming well and maybe even accepted upstream there's there's uh, you have to help with uh, forming the structure of the thesis because uh, it's not just the patches that has to be submitted of course there has to be the text as well and uh, with that the university consultant can help uh, the most because that's uh, that's what they do more often than we do um, and after the, the thesis is eventually submitted, uh, then uh, 
you have as a uh, as a supervisor you also have to write a review and then you participate in the defense it can be done of course uh, online these days and uh, there you basically read the review and maybe ask the students some questions and then the committee decides on the whether it's passed or failed and, and the mark so boris says i can confirm that experience but i'm not sure what <laughs> part that was about but great yeah Polly says that due to pandemic situation, it's very inconvenient to do a face-to-face -face communication with students inside university for three years here. Yeah, the, the two theses I will be talking on the next slides, I was also mostly, um, uh, you know, supervising via Zoom or Google Meet meetings. Uh, the, the bachelor student i think i haven't even met uh, in person because that was still during the strong pandemic phase and uh, the master student i think i've seen twice <laughs> in person but yeah these days it can be done oh yeah boris says that uh, he can confirm that professors enjoy industrial involvement so that's fine. So uh, the bachelor thesis, uh, in my, ex I, I've uh, been supervising one uh, as a SUSE employee. I've been supervising more when I was still at the university, but that that was different. So. Um, that started in January uh, last year, and it was that uh, a student of the third last year of the bachelor studies was interested in memory management topic. Uh, and uh, in this case, we didn't have any ideas in Confluence that would be suitable for bachelor thesis because they were more open-ended uh, and more suitable for master thesis. So I came up with some smaller tasks that could be done in the slab allocator, because for bachelor thesis, it's better if these tasks are really well-defined and you can expect, oh, this, this is just work that has to be done and but I'm confident that the result is achievable and yeah, somebody just has to do this work. Which might be trivial for yourself if you invested some time, but uh, for, for, a, for a student uh, with no experience with uh, the kernel, it still means that he has to become familiar with the kernel subsystem and the, and the process and and implement some changes there so that's uh, enough uh, of work or learning to be for a suitable bachelor thesis topic so as i said we uh, we follow the upstream kernel process since the very beginning so uh, each of the tasks that the student has been doing, he was sending me patches first privately, so I could point out the most obvious mistakes that would just waste uh, upstream reviewers' time. But also the goal wasn't that the patches I would consider perfect before posting upstream, because uh, then the student can also get more diverse experience uh, or experience from more diverse feedback from other upstream people as well which is useful because that, that's uh, like part of the uh, learning uh, uh, how the community works so 
and in this case even the upstream feedback was uh, really useful because initially i uh, there was a task to implement some uh, self test in slab and i was familiar with k self tests so i suggested k self tests and the first version was done using that but then the k unit maintainers saw the patches and said oh this is much more better fit for k unit and even provided uh, some guidance how how to use some of the features of k unit that improved the the tests and and i think that was very useful and uh, uh, and the the patches were were then accepted and even uh, the K-Unit maintainers, I think, mentioned that, oh, these, these tests are look like uh, great examples of how to use these K-Unit features. So, yeah, we had uh, weekly online meetings. I was doing the patch reviews. So that started in the January. In May, it was basically the implementation was done of all the tasks. Then we discussed the thesis structure, had some uh, several calls that with, that included also the university professor, Peter Tuma, who, who had great uh, uh, guidance about how the thesis should be structured and uh, so on. Uh, then it was submitted in late July and successfully defensed in the, defended in September. And yeah, the part of the task, uh, the patches were merged to mainline long before defense. Some required uh, changes to stack depot that uh, I was then uh, before be because Linus was unhappy. So, uh, so yeah, the student had uh, even the experience of having the patch uh, reverted by Linus. <laughs> which uh, of course I wouldn't uh, uh, wish for him to experience, but Linus is of course nice to new people, so that was fine. And uh, after the defense, uh, I, I did some necessary changes and resubmitted those patches on behalf of the students. So even the, the, these parts are were ultimately merged and I think the experience was uh, great. So that was for the bachelor thesis. So yeah, it's really if you have some smaller cleanup tasks, you can think about how to turn them into a bachelor thesis topic. Uh, master thesis. Uh, uh, that uh, is expected to be somewhat more involved. Uh, yes, yeah, so the student should uh, do much more of his own research and and uh, like proposing new ideas, uh, and and it can even happen that uh, the ideas wouldn't work out in the end. That's fine, and. Uh, and in this case, we had uh, a topic in the Confluence page uh, um, that was uh, that that was uh, inspired by uh, uh, some propri proprietary workload, which I will not mention if, if this is going to be public, but you can guess it, probably. So uh, uh, this workload was uh, very heavy on memory map calls and fragmenting the virtual address space because the uh, the implementation of merging couldn't deal with uh, merging anonymous memory areas that are remapped around because uh, some page index. Uh, fields are set to the original locations and prevent merging. And we had some idea that, yeah, this is a complex topic that will, that is probably solvable, but the solution will probably not be nice and uh, will have some overhead. 
but it would be nice if somebody really tried it and then we would know exactly what the overhead is and how the solution looks like but it's possible that uh, it will not be like eligible for merging for this complexity and overhead reasons so that's okay for a master thesis topic you just have to communicate it to the student so he's not uh, like disappointed in the end and so that was clear to the student and uh, and so he accepted uh, so after some discussion he accepted it this topic and yeah this is an example how the uh, how the formalized assignment looks like when you expand the the small blurb from the confluence age so i guess uh, you can just read that later if you're interested and uh, yeah uh, so we had this uh, we uh, let me get back to the timing so yeah we first uh, started this discussion in july 2020 and uh, the topic was assigned eventually in january 2021 because the student had uh, also some other school projects that he wanted to finish first but even then uh, there was no activity for until august after the assignment because there was still other things uh, to do for the student at school so the lesson here is uh, that if you have some topic that may that you think may become urgent uh, then there's a risk of assigning it as a thesis because then then uh, you cannot force uh, the student uh, to adjust uh, this time possibilities so so it was uh, fine for for this particular topic just just a uh, uh, just a warning if you have potentially urgent topics then uh, then uh, doing it, them as a thesis might be risky but after the student had time every everything was uh, great and uh, he worked we had uh, again first some irregular meetings then basically weekly meetings un until it was uh, submitted uh, in July this year and yeah uh, as as we expected uh, it was possible to solve this problem and it was complex and had some overhead and it was useful because uh, we had some rough idea how what prevents merging but then it turns out that there was um, actually some more issues to solve but that the student found out and also solved so that's great uh, some of the cleanups and uh, simple fix-ups that were just uh, omitted because nobody thought about them uh, they are they were merged to mainline so so the, the student also had this experience of contributing patches to mainline but the main work uh, remains uh, as an RFC for now because unless we can demonstrate there's a significant uh, uh, improvement for an open source project and not this proprietary workload uh, that 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 really can benefit from this work then it's hard to get it merged with all the complexity even if we said okay m most uh, processes don't uh, need this uh, this uh, improved merging that has some overhead so we could introduce some per process flag that that would make it uh, easier to sell but even then you add complexity and you need to say oh there's this project that will actually use this flag and that unfortunately didn't happen until now but if it uh, if if there is 
uh, some project and raises their hand, oh, we, we could use it and we will have a finished solution that we can just hopefully rebase and, uh, and merge. And uh, because the student uh, really solved a complex problem uh, in a working way, then the thesis was defended just fine last month with the best possible mark. And yeah, now we have the solution if we ever need it. And uh, also the thesis text improved the state of the documentation around these areas which is a useful achievement by itself but yeah it would be now better if we could copy the the relevant parts to the kernel documentation so i i thought that was also great success uh, except it's not mainline but uh, then i got a feedback that uh, from the university professor that it would have been even better if 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 there was more open ended research than was needed for this thesis so basically the the path to the solution was seemed too constrained to him so so i guess the lesson is that if you have even more uh, topic uh, like uh, topic idea so what if we try this and even if it's uh, it requires more more research then it's okay as a thesis topic if you're interested in supervising it uh, so that brings me to the almost the conclusion so the question is uh, yeah, as you might have noticed, uh, I mentioned uh, months of weekly meetings and uh, reviews of patches and theses. So obviously, that's that's not for free in terms of spending your time. So, so you might ask yourself, okay, what's what's in it for me then? Yeah, if you focus on the to to do list item that you turned into the thesis topic and uh, and uh, it was done as a thesis then then yeah that's the outcome that the list to do list item is done and that's great but you could say okay if i did it myself uh, maybe it would take uh, less time than all the supervising and that might probably be true because of course you are already an experienced uh, developer uh, that that can do the same thing in much shorter time you don't have to learn the process and the, the subsystem but the question if if, if you were not uh, like committed to supervising the thesis would you find the time uh, or would you just postpone the item and leave it on the to-do list so that's one thing and uh yeah as i said it's can be useful experience mentoring like except you're not mentoring a new employee but uh, you are mentoring uh, basically the student so so i think that's useful experience as well and and yeah bringing me back to the beginning it's a chance of bringing new people to the community and potentially SUSE. Uh, as new employees so i have yet to report uh, success <laughs> on this part so so the bachelor student is obviously now uh, uh, continuing the master studies so maybe he will be interesting in the master thesis topic maybe not and uh, the master student has just defended his thesis so maybe he will uh, be interested working as Suze, maybe not i i'm not sure yet uh, so uh, that's uh, i think all from me and uh, if you are if you have any questions or if you want to add your own experience it will be great thanks
Boris says that uh, doing stuff like this is very important. It doesn't matter if they end up working for us. Yeah, I agree. It, it's not the only uh, motivation. And it's and it's basically helping our community, yeah. And uh, by the way, it doesn't have to be just kernel if uh, people from other teams are interested. Uh, the topic ideas don't have to be just uh, kernels. Hi, Peter. I wanted to ask uh, what was the feeling of these uh, students about kernel development? Did they enjoy it or were they like uh, afraid of this at the beginning and then had a better feeling or actually the opposite? Yeah, I think there might have been afraid a bit because of all the rumors of how hostile LKML might be and yeah. now how hard it is to deal with the email clients and so on but i think their experience was then oh it's not as bad as it was that and that's my feeling i didn't like specifically ask but yeah. I think they were happy with uh, the feedback that they've been mm -hmm. getting. It was always constructive and useful. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually just curious how they were familiar with C programming, because I, I wonder if these days at the universities they are still like teaching C or they are preferring another languages like... yeah i think they are still teaching c maybe uh, still even some mandatory course even though it's not the first language that's taught at the university i think that's python these days but uh, these students that uh, are interested in these topics are usually also uh, ones that already did uh, operating systems course uh, mm. by, by the by this very department and professor tuma and then mm. they had uh, even had to implement parts of uh, kernel that runs on a mips simulator in c so so that's not the issue mm -hmm. it, it just uh, the the process side and uh, the much larger code base that they've ever seen worked with before hmm. michael Coatney asks not sure if i missed it in the talk how did your students learn about the topics was it in the list shared on some of the uni university and companies event yeah uh, there is this there was such event uh, like before the pandemic and i think a similar event is actually happening tomorrow in the charles university and uh, uh, peter Hodach will be there but uh, aside from this formal event uh, yeah, as I said, they were doing this operating system course and the prof and Professor Tuma was advertising this there, uh, that there are these topics and opportunities uh, uh, to work with not just SUSE, but also other companies. And, uh, and, and the last time we talked, we we uh, we discussed that we would uh, put them on their website as well so so it's uh, yeah now it's actually a great time to update uh, the the 
page with the ideas and provide a new version to the university because usually it's okay usually it's uh, around this time that uh, students are picking their topics uh, how much did you have to convince your students to write the thesis in english <laughs> uh, mm, in in this case it was like uh, a given thing like if you want to <laughs> be doing this topic then it will be in english and uh, so there was not uh, not the, there was no need to convince that was just like part of the deal i would say and uh, in this particular department it's common that theses are written in english because it's actually easier to write <laughs> these kind of things in english so you don't have to deal with translating all the, the technical words or sprinkling them in english into a, a check text and actually the the the, the bachelor student uh, uh, was the, the he was actually even prepared to 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 do the defense in uh, his native language which is slovak and uh, be, but uh, which which is fine the, the talking at the defense can be in czech but okay but the slides are better to be in english anyway but because william brown was uh, there because of his uh, own uh, students defense the the professor Tuma convinced the student, uh, the, the slop student, to do his defense uh, in English as well, like last minute, and he was brave and accepted that. So that was great. Okay, Michael is typing more. Yeah, Michael says that uh, given the current slide, uh, um, possible benefit from you as a supervisor is that you can also learn from the student about the cool new stuff that the different generation uses. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think if this was the case. My experience can't think of anything but the other problem is actually that uh, the cool new stuff these days seems to be uh, machine learning so when we were at this one of the trade fairs like earlier this year with the SUSE stand the, the students coming to the stand was, was like are you doing machine learning no okay my goal as well <laughs> and uh, the operating systems are not as cool as they maybe were before so we have to cope with that and boris says yeah cool new stuff could be ebpf right okay i think or rust our... yeah or rust yeah yeah, sure, you can propose a topic to implement something in Rust. That would be a great, at least a bachelor thesis. OK, I think the time is up. So and there seems to be no more questions. So in the end, we filled the whole slot. I didn't expect that. So uh, thank you for your uh, attention and uh, please consider participating. It can be 
useful for you and the community as well. Yeah. And bye. Thank you for presentation and yeah, and I wonder how many new students we are going to get in the future and and maybe new uh, teachers or.